Hi guys, I am feeling a little bit discombobulated today because I stayed up way too late last night finishing this shawl and so I didn't get that much sleep. And then my hair dryer kind of exploded, the cord exploded, and so I have no way of drying my hair. This is the best I could do. And then I also spent far too long looking for a needle to weave in the ends of this shawl. So <laughs> let's talk about the shawl. Hi guys, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. Every Friday I come here and I talk about knitting things and yarn things, Sweet Georgia things, and School of Sweet Georgia things as well. Today I am a little bit sleepy, I'm a little bit tired. I did not get that much sleep. I think I got about three hours of sleep last night and uh, I just, I stayed up too late. I I just did not time my evening appropriately and I stayed up far too late trying to finish this shawl. I was like, I want to do it. I'm going to have it done so that I can wet block it and then have it ready and dry so we can film today. And uh, yeah, I stayed up way too late and that's never good because it just snowballs into bad days. But in any case, today's actually been not too bad. So I do want to tell you about the shawl that I finished. So this shawl I showed a couple of episodes ago. I had just started it maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago. And I started it because I had forgotten my projects at the studio. And so I had nothing to knit. And so I went through my stash and found the yarn that I really, really wanted to knit with. And that was this chocolate chili color. And I was saving it for something. And I finally decided, well, we're just going to go ahead and make something with it. So in that moment of panic, like I need to have a project to knit right now, I chose a pattern that I have been looking at for a long time. And this is by the Knox Mountain Knit Company. And every single time I look at their patterns, I'm always really, really intrigued because they're very graphic. They're very vibrant. Uh, the color combinations that they choose are always typically very bold, very poppy kind of color combinations. So it really appeals to me. It really draws me in. And so this particular shawl has been on my list for for a while now. I saw Diana Twist knit this at, no, she wore it at Spinzilla last year. And hers was gorgeous. Hers is like grays and, and whites, but then also like with a pop of yellow. That's what I remember. It was like a grello combination. I really, really liked it. So she really encouraged me. She said, you know, this is a really easy to knit shawl, plus it's worsted weight, so it goes super fast. So I was like, okay, let's do that. So this is the shawl. I'm going to show you the whole thing. Ta -da -da. So the shawl is actually very, very easy. It's just a top-down triangle shawl. So this is one of those heart-shaped triangle shapes. Uh, so the heart-shaped triangle shawl shape is not like a straight triangle. So in a straight triangle, you would increase down the middle every other row and then increase down the sides of the shawl every other row. In this particular case, you increase down the middle every other row and then you increase on the sides every single row. So both the knit sides and the purl sides of the shawl, you have to be increasing on either edge. So that produces a shawl that kind of has like this kind of a shape. It's not straight, but it's kind of like this sort of shape. I'm exaggerating obviously, but it kind of goes like this. And so the design of that shawl shape is so that it rests a little bit better on your shoulders and doesn't tend to fall off. Triangle shawls tend to fall off. So this one sit, tends to sit a little bit better on your shoulders. The other thing that is really, really easy about this shawl is that it just has uh, different sections. So it's worked in different sections. So this is one pattern section with the stripes. This is another pattern section with a double moss stitch. There's another pattern section with mostly garter and then these slipped stitches that make these little nice ridges. The ridges then expand into this twisted stitch section that looks like a lattice. I think it might be a little bit hard to see on the video, but because it's a little bit hard to see the texture. Okay, maybe if I turn it to the window, you can see there's a little bit of a lattice sort of texture happening. It's actually quite fun. Very fun, very easy to knit. Everything about this shawl is just really easy. It's readable, it's understandable. There's no charts. Everything is all written instructions, which is not 
my favorite, but it's perfectly easy. The only thing is that when I got to the end, I knew that, okay, so the last four rows are supposed to be this cayenne color, this orangey color. And I knew that I think I'd used this cayenne like a few yards of it for something else. And so I knew I wasn't going to have enough. So then I thought, well, I'm just going to use this chili chocolate color because I still have a bit more of that. So then I started to do those last four rows with the chili chocolate color. And then I ran out after one and a half rows. I ran out. I think I just miss misread how many stitches were going to be at the end and it just felt like it was going on forever. So I had finished knitting my tulumine shawl and I had some extra strawberry tea left over from that. And so it was, since it was just handy, it was late last night. It was like midnight when I was doing this. And I, <laughs> I thought, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just do a little shortcut. And rather than knitting all four rows to finish off this shawl, I'm just going to knit two and then cast off. And so I did, I knit two rows and started to cast off and got halfway through the cast off. And then I was like, I don't like it. It doesn't sit properly. It's curling the wrong way. It's, it's not right. So I had to get another needle and then rip off all the stuff that I had bound off and then pick up all the stitches again and then re-knit another two rows so that I could get that edge nice and flat and then finally bind off. So it was probably about one o'clock in the morning when I finally finished this and then I still had to go and wet block it. But I am glad that I did. I'm glad that I made the extra effort because I do like this edging a little bit more. It is a slightly different color. I mean, you can see strawberry tea is a little bit more berry and this is more warm. So it's not the end of the world, but it's also not ideal, but I'm also not a fussy enough knitter that I would undo this border and then get more chili chocolate or get more pumpkin or cayenne and then re-knit that edge. That's not going to happen. So all in all, I love this shawl. It's quick and easy nice and cozy. I can definitely see, you know, just popping in a, like a little uh, shawl pin here and then I can just wear that while I'm working and it covers your shoulders and it feels really good. I'm really excited about this one. Now tell me in the comments below if you think that this color looks good on me or if you're thinking, no, this color is not for me. I've had very mixed responses from different people. Every time I pick up this skein of chili chocolate, people are like, oh, I'm not sure if that'll look so good on you. Oh, it's a little bit brown. So I'm just interested to hear your thoughts <laughs> on if you think that this is a good color for me or if something different, like something like, like something totally different like this. Do you think that color is better on me? This is a topic that we are talking about in the next month's School of Sweet Georgia content. So I've been making this color mastery series for a couple of months now, and every month we tackle a slightly different topic in the area of color and working with color, designing with color. Next month, starting November 1st, is going to be a module about wearing color and trying to find your best colors. And this is something that has been very elusive for me, trying to figure out what colors are my best colors, because it's very much obscured and colored by my favorite colors <laughs> or the colors that I want to wear, the colors that I want to be mixed up in. So I'm always very curious to see what actually looks good on me versus what I actually wear. So this is something, if, if it's if it's something that you are interested in, this is something that we're going to be working on in the School of Sweet Georgia starting November 1st, if you want to join us there. So this is that brown color. This is purple color. I'm thinking the purple is better. You know, I might actually even re-knit this shawl again. No, actually, I'm not going to re-knit the shawl. They have so many other patterns. I'm just going to knit another one of their patterns. I think that that would be fun. The other one that I think is going to be really, really fun right now is I have it in my queue and in my stash. I want to um, knit Andrea Maury's new shift and night shift 
patterns. Shift is a cowl, which is using a slip stitch technique as well, and she is making it out of hand spun. Well, it's not hand spun yarn. It's actually spin cycle yarn, which is spun to look like hand dyed hand spun yarn, but in fact, it's actually mill spun yarn, but it's beautiful, wonderful yarn. I actually have a couple skeins here that it's like my souvenir yarn from many, many years ago. So she designed this cowl pattern called the shift. And then she made that also into a larger shawl version called night shift. And night shift is a worsted weight, same technique and same look. The cowl, the shift is sport weight. You could probably use fingering weight, something like that. And uh, yeah, that one also looks really interesting to me right now. <laughs> I also stumbled upon this sweater by Isabel Kramer called Aim, and I really love it. And I, <laughs> I kind of want to make a few little modifications to it. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about that one as well. This is the other shawl that I finished recently. This is the Tulamine Mystery Shawl, and here it is all nice and drapey now that it has also been wet blocked. I like to wet block all of my pieces. I don't know why. It feels incredibly satisfying to dunk them in hot, warmish water and just... There's something about that that feels like you're shaking out all of the imperfections and all of the weird tension gauge issues kind of just even themselves out once the whole thing is wet. And yeah, I love it. So then you wring it out and then you lay it out to dry. And then the next morning, it just feels like it poofed up a little bit. And with all of these projects, it creates like this beautiful drapiness to them. So I was a little bit concerned with this particular shawl because I saw Teresa's version and Teresa's version is gorgeous. And it was like silky and drapey and we were using Tough Love Sock. And it was, yeah, it felt drapey, but I know that her gauge was um, looser than mine. And so I think I had knit with a slightly smaller needle size than what Tabitha specified. I don't know why <laughs> I do that. I should just follow the instructions. But um, I knit with a slightly smaller needle size. And so I was concerned that maybe my stole was going to be a little bit more dense, a little bit more stiff. And so I'm actually quite pleasantly surprised at how even it is and how evened out it is. It's, uh, it's lovely. I'm quite enjoying this. I do also like the colors of this, but I also think that these colors are a little bit muted for me. So, uh, if I were to make this one again, I feel like I want to make it in much more poppy, poppy and bright colors. This could be a really nice spring stole as well. Spring stole, spring shawl. Yeah, I'm quite liking that. So the other thing that I have been working on like quite intensely is, uh, well, the Color Mastery series stuff that I was making for November is all done. It's all loaded up into the website. And so when November 1st hits, it's just going to release to the students and the members there. The other thing that I'm working on right now is another course. It's called Yarnography. And I think I've mentioned this to you guys before. And uh, it's about photographing textiles. And it's kind of like a primer in the, the, the fundamentals of photography, you know, looking at exposure, how to make a good exposure, how to work with shutter speed and aperture, just like a lot of those little technical basics and things like that, that you need to know. So that way you know how to make adjustments of your photos. It's really hard to know where to start if you, you don't even know, you know, what's going on. So just to get like a nice groundwork for that. But part of that course is also a couple of sections on photographing other people and photographing yourself. Because I am absolutely the worst at this. You know, you go to your Ravelry page and it's supposed to be full of projects that you've knitted and finished. But once I knit and finish them, I stopped photographing them. My, my Ravelry page is actually quite a disaster. It's, it's, it's not complete. It doesn't have everything that I've made. It's, 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 it's it needs some work. And so part of the reason why it's incomplete is because I am missing photos of my finished projects. And the reason why it's so difficult to get photos of your finished project is because you might be the one wearing them and it's hard to take photos of yourself for posting on Ravelry. 
And then some people are very lucky and have, you know, photographers in their family who are able to take photos of them. I do not have <laughs> such a resource at this time. And so there needs to be a way that I take pictures of these finished objects. And so for the most part, I end up putting it on my dress form. So... So there's only so much that you can do with a dress form. A dress form is an inanimate object and it in and of itself is not interesting. Um, this dress form is lovely, but it only holds the garment or the piece. It doesn't actually have much personality besides that. I mean, the thing that is the most appealing about photography is faces. Like you just gravitate towards looking at people's faces. And so even though we're talking about taking pictures of the garments, it's your face that pulls people in and makes people even want to look at that photo to begin with. And so I find that, yeah, I do take a lot of these things, a lot of photos with my dress form. They're for record keeping. They are not engaging to me. <laughs> they're not interesting to me. They're just, they're just photos of the thing that I finished. And so I want for there to be a way that I can take better pictures of the things that I've made so that I can produce a much more complete record of the things that I've made. I, I, I go back and I look at um, a lot of the photos that I've shot from the beginning when I started knitting and trying to take you know, trying to record the things that I've made. And the photos have been shot in bad lighting. The shots have been out of focus. They've been, um, you know, color cast with a incandescent light bulb. All sorts of ugly things have happened with those photos. And so over the years, I'm learning and I'm improving and I'm trying to get better at taking photos of the things that I've made because I like having that memory. I like remembering why I made it and who I made it for, or how I made it, all those kinds of things. So I do want to do a better job of record keeping and keeping track of the things that I actually finished and how I felt about them. I know people, some people are fantastic at doing this on Ravelry, you know, really, really on the ball and, you know, getting all those details in there, making all their notes. And yeah, some people are really, really great at Ravelry. I am not. So the other challenge that I have coming up very shortly is that it's like two o'clock in the afternoon right now in Vancouver, and very, very soon, the window of available light in this room is gonna go from like one o'clock until four o'clock. There's gonna be like an, a three hour window where I can take photographs in natural daylight. It's a very, very stressful time. Uh, when it gets dark, in Vancouver, it gets dark for a long time and it gets rainy. And that lack of natural light is extremely depressing for me. And, and then having to squeeze all of the photography time into that three hour window is also extremely stressful. So, you know, I'm trying to find ways that I could use maybe additional artificial light see how that looks, if it looks horrible or, you know, different ways that we can manage that. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at lots of different photography challenges as related to taking pictures of the stuff that you've made and uh, interested in hearing from you guys about what you find most challenging about photography for your knitting or your weaving or sewing or spinning or anything. If you take pictures of yarn, do you have trouble with that? Do you only have an iPhone camera to take pictures with? What is your greatest problem when it comes to taking photos of the stuff that you have made? So that's what I have to talk to you guys about today. So please do let me know if you guys have a question or a comment about photographing things that you have knit or sewed or woven or made. I would love to hear your questions. Just leave them in the comments below. So if you like this video, please hit the like button because it really helps other knitters and makers find the things that we're talking about here. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do hit the subscribe button and then you'll get notified every week when videos go up. But it's basically Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning, Pacific Standard Time. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.